Hello, this is LEGO's Upside Down set, based on the hit Netflix series, Stranger Things. If you've never watched Stranger Things, I'm going to give you a synopsis in less than 20 seconds that's going to spoil way less than this set itself does. It's a sci-fi lightweight horror show set in the 1980s that follows the adventures of a group of adolescents and teens in effectively random small town USA as they encounter the mysteries of a dark parallel universe and fight to save the world as we know it. The Upside Down is what they call the dark alternate dimension and this Lego set depicts the house of one of the main protagonists in both normal and corrupted realities if you will. The genius of this set is that you can do this. There's also one other, possibly even better thing you can do that they don't really advertise, but I'll get to that later. Let's first take a closer look at the normal version of this house, though, known as the Byers Residence. B-Y-E-R-S, that's the family name. You know, just at first glance, ignoring the rest of the set and the big gimmick and everything, and ignoring the theme, uh... This just looks good to me. This is such a, a wholesome, it's just small town, any town USA looking house of a type that Lego has never made as far as I can recall. At least they've definitely never made anything that looks this good, this believable. This looks like something that could be right on a model railroad layout except for the studs. The outer walls are all built with studs on the side construction to allow the attachment of these tiles, which give you the horizontal slat texture for the exterior siding. And then there are also these new printed small window panes. So you see two windows stacked vertically right there, and you'll see more in just a second. That is actually a new print for that small standard uh, size and shape of window pane there in tan to represent newspapers in the windows. You have various types of furniture outside on this large wide porch with you know just basic building you can put a figure in at least one figure in each of these seating elements more of those window panes there four of them you know two by two arrangement small little table there just out front stuff that you'll typically see around houses like this and this is actually a swing and you can put a single figure in there and there's just enough clearance for them to actually swing back and forth a little bit Mostly forward, not back quite so much. You can also rotate a little bit, but this does impact the ground just slightly. It's not anything that's, that's an issue, but you know, it just limits the range a little bit. This thing over here, this Technic brick, gives you a pin that faces upwards, and that's what's used to hold on to the SUV that you saw was able to remain connected to the place. When I turned it upside down, I'll show you that SUV more closely uh, later on and then this is just part of the front yard it just has the olive color to represent some you know some foliage maybe that's uh, a little bit a little bit dried out it's just fairly generic they didn't want it to be too bright and then for more foliage you have these trees these trees are brick built there's a single reference to something that happens in the show there uh, these are actually identical left to right and a bit different top to bottom and they're constructed in a way that gives you a flat surface on the top so that when you flip this over that becomes the base for the entire structure the roof here is nice just a little bit of tiering work it actually has two different angles these are just angled pieces right here you know it's just part of the the slope shape but then the rest of the roof is actually purposefully angled to fairly closely match that. I think it's I think it's impacted just a little bit. There may be just a little bit of stress in the pieces there, but it's nothing that stresses me personally out. And you just have another tree over here on this side, and there's no sign on that one. Looking around the back, just a little bit of extra texture brought in with some stickers. There are a lot of stickers used in this set. So if you don't like stickers, well, you may just have to to grit your teeth a little bit. There's a little bit of attic space up here with a, <laughs> it's a camcorder, old school camcorder with a VHS tape in it. And over on this side, that's a, a nice wizard's hat. It's printed up all around and it's something that can be used for cosplaying. And it's related to one of the main characters and one of the main themes that starts off in season one. 
Also up in the attic is a stack of papers. These are drawings. And there's a sticker on the top one to give you some actual detail. But it's tough to see that. You have to do a little bit of disassembly. It's a sticker on a 2x2 two two tile. And that thing there that's depicted is called a Mind Flare. And it's one of the antagonists of the series. And this, is, this represents a drawing by one of the protagonists. Overall, the interior of the house is fairly small, but there's far more detail here than I could reasonably ask for in an actual official Lego set. You got a brick-built chair here, which will hold a single figure, a potted plant. There are some storage boxes back in the back, including one on the left that has a sticker on top that says Xmas, so you would find some Christmas lights inside of there. This is a D&D rule book. It's just a sticker on a two by two tile but it's a very nice and appropriate inclusion that's a bear trap that could be set to try to stop evil things or bad people got an axe back there also for a little bit of self-defense and here are the christmas lights some of the christmas lights that have been put up you have some physical ones and you have some that are just represented with the sticker on the back now this is an important reference to the show. I'll try to be kind to people who haven't seen the show throughout this video, but also give nods to folks who have seen it. I've seen uh, season one twice and season two once so far myself, but that's an important arrangement of stuff up there that has to do with communication or attempts at communication. You've got a couple of, of boards up with things that are posted up over here. Very important telephone which is attached to the wall they could have added more detail there but it would have been too large for the amount of space here i think the couch is super ugly with its colors which is absolutely uh, appropriate for the scene for the setting and on the coffee table here is one single copy of a poster that is announcing that a particular kid is missing that's will byers and he is one of the residents, the youngest resident of this house. And then this small room over on the side is Will's personal bedroom. So he's got his bed there, which is a build that I haven't seen Lego do before. They're trying to show that the sheets are partly drawn there. There are lots of lights inside in case you're afraid of the dark. You got a, a Jaws poster up on the wall. You got a cassette deck. There's a table table back there with some drawers in it just minimum size but trying to get the maximum suggestion of detail across i think they do a pretty good job with that there's the backboard behind the bed and some dnd related posters or drawings on the wall posters and drawings and also the zombie boy drawing which is also an, an in-universe reference there's also an awkward hole in the wall back right here, which is a reference to something that happens in one specific episode, but it's persistent after that. The, the damage to the house does not get repaired immediately, so that is, that is appropriate and needs to be there. You may have noticed that there's a light brick up in the ceiling, and I passed over that because I wanted to save it for the end of the look at the light version of the house, or the, the normal universe version of the house. That light actually projects through a printed piece. They have a printed one by two panel piece with a silver covering over it and just some holes. And the holes allow light through, whereas the covering does not. And it actually is trying to light up some of the specific letters. To be honest, I don't see exactly what it's trying to spell out and the Christmas lights get in the way just a little bit. But it's a nice effect and I very much appreciate the attempt at, at the very least, even if it doesn't actually end up spelling out anything in particular or wasn't even trying, it's it's just a nice effect that's, that's very appropriate for this space. Comparatively speaking, the upside down is dark and full of terrors. Sorry for the cross-reference there, had to do it. But I really like actually what the designer or designers did here to simulate this dark space by not only just reducing the values of colors used, but reducing things down to grays, dark browns in particular, and dark blues. You know, dark blue is, is a color that our eyes tend to see at night. It represents nighttime illumination. And the dark brown just represents dreariness and 
uh, indistinguishable colors in in the dark and uh, a little bit of of decay as well i think it really completely makes sense you notice that the whole place is mirrored vertically which is interesting you know it's not something that you see done very frequently just in life in general often you know we'll see things that are mirrored left to right but mirroring top to bottom gives you a, a really nice direct contrast where you can just look up and you can look down and you can see the exact differences between the two areas and you see that most things have been preserved uh, with the exception of decay making its way in and and corruption so all the major objects are here but they're just worn and there are stickers for each each item that you see in the the normal world represented in the upside down as well just not looking so good you know not uh, not clean and crisp not colorful anymore poor plant potted plant is dead it's a good way to represent that i think rather than just changing the color of the same flower stem piece just taking it down to a basic stem and then making it look like that itself has has wilted and and then dried up so you're just seeing all the basically all the same stuff that's just yeah reduced reduced to to relative ruin you know all the same object still exist they've just been changed and you have some foliage that that's growing in in places where it shouldn't be because the place is falling apart and you know you got vines and things but the human made objects and human placed objects are all there they're just changed in color and general representation as a custom builder i also appreciate a lot of the special colors that are included in this set for all sorts of pieces including some new colors for things i believe this dark blue is new for that large leaf piece we've got the dark brown color for the small leaves we've got a carrot top uh, that's done in black a bunch of those uh, i believe that this antenna is new that's actually not fully transparent it's not crystal like it's more like translucent it's just slightly frosted and it's done in the the dark brown or sometimes called trans black color which just looks cool and kind of gives you a little bit of ethereal nature ghostly you don't know exactly what it's supposed to be but it all kind of looks like it's just drooping this is also the seaweed piece in just a plain black that's pretty uh pretty nasty i like it though i really like the color choices and the part choices that were made there's also an one other interesting build for some of the foliage oh yeah we're looking at it right here it's just difficult to see with so few colors uh, there's a black sausage piece used inside of there and these are the dark brown small leaves and they're just attached somewhat haphazardly just gives them a little bit of angle they're actually attached into an inverted what is that an inverted one by three tile with peg hole in the middle like bar hole in the middle it's the piece that was used for the base of the unikitty heads on the the newer designs like for the collectible figure series getting back to the house looking at the outside of it this time this is a little bit more modified than the interior because there's a lot more in the way of all these vines and weird foliage and strange stuff that's around it you got these whips that are wrapped around some of these columns there are a lot of trans dark brown or trans black one by one round tiles that are attached in various places to help make the place look more creepy the panel the, the inset panel for the windows is different they have the different colors against the dark gray rather than tan for this upside down version of the place and you know all the major things are still there it's just a little bit more destroyed and distressed than the interior is so a little bit more work goes into this to separate it out to make it more unique and I do appreciate that. I, I like the end result. And that's the upside down version of the house. Now let me show you that one more really cool thing you can do with this set that they really don't talk about. It's 
It's not for the faint of heart. You do have to be careful, and it does require some application of strength with, with care, such as not to rip everything apart. But I've just separated these two houses, and uh, they now work perfectly fine by themselves. Well, I personally think that these look great just by themselves like this. And, I mean, this is a perfectly usable house. Even if you don't care about Stranger Things, this is a nice house. You know, it's a very realistic looking house that adds a lot of class to just about any scene that, that I can think of that's, that's, you know, a residential area. And then you end up with this, which, you know, maybe isn't as useful, but again, take it, take it out of the Stranger Things context. And it has kind of just a, just a run-down house in a swampy area sort of sort of vibe. You know, this still seems like it could be feasible in a regular universe, just in a, I really feel, just a, a swampy area. Just imagine that the original colors were as you see here, and then maybe add a little bit of, of foliage, you know, some olive-colored foliage out here, a little bit of dark orange, a little bit of regular brown, spruce it up just a bit, and you actually have two houses that you get out of this set that are very nice. Now, they, they are open on the back. It would be possible to leave out some of these pieces and actually connect the two together if that's something of interest to you or do a little bit of customization, you know, provide a wall back there. But it's just something that I find very interesting. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to, to show it. Hopefully this will inspire some folks to use this set in ways it wasn't intended to be used. As we move into looking at the minifigs, the set includes this display stand with just a sticker for the logo over there. And this represents the four main adventuring characters from the first season. So this here is Mike. He's a kid. He has medium-sized legs in dark green and a new torso print against tan. The figure on the whole looks pretty good, especially that torso print. It's always good to get more medium legs since those are available these days but to me the face and the hair together don't look like the character from the show unlike the other figures in this set this one just doesn't quite match now he does have an alternate face with an alternate expression which is good it looks like the printing that i got in in the black is a little bit thin you know just didn't quite go down properly. I don't have... Yeah, I guess it was just thin, like it was watery ink. This is Lucas, and this figure, I think, is very good. So once again, you get a nice torso print, which is new. And yeah, it's printed around the back as well. No alternate face for Lucas, because you would see it when you don't want to see it, if they did put that on there. But I really like the reuse of the, the headgear piece with the bandana built into it. And they put the, the camo print on there, and then the base color is black. So on top is supposed to represent his hair, which is fairly short. And I, I just think that this is a, a good choice for him. He does look a little bit shiny. The the head itself, the, the hair area, is rather glossy. <laughs> I wish there was some texture there. But overall, this is done pretty nicely. And he's got what he calls his wrist rocket. <laughs> And it's an existing piece. I think we first got that with the uh, Bark Simpson uh, collectible minifig. But this is a new color for it with the light gray as the base color. And it has a little bit of yellow on it, which isn't perfect, but I, I, think, it looks, I think it looks fine. I think it's excusable. And then he also has the vertical style uh, flashlight there, which has the T-shaped piece in gunmetal gray. Now this is Dustin. And, oh my goodness, this has to be one of the very best LEGO official representations of a, a real person as a minifigure that I've ever seen them do. If not the best, it's that good to me. It's absolutely perfect. I mean, it has minifig proportions. It has no nose, but it looks like the actor. Spot on. It's too perfect. The hair built in with that baseball cap it's so good and the face is perfect as well he's got his orienteering compass there which i believe is a new print they've done an orienteering compass before but it, this looks like a new one to me i didn't 
bring the old one out of out of the archives to check, but I believe that's new. Once again, medium sized legs, so more different colors for that. Good to see. Got the walkie talkie there, common theme. And around the back, he has an alternate face. So let's see what that looks like framed up by the hair. Yeah, that works too. Still looks like him, even though you're not seeing the the tongue behind there. Yeah, this is this is this is fantastic. This could not have been done any better, if you ask me. And then here's L or Eleven, if you must. That's her official character name, Eleven, and she's in uh, a disguise here. It's inspired by E.T.'s disguise from the original E.T. movie. And I think this looks really, really good as well. Looks like the actress in this outfit. Even, even the skirt, it, it's, it's totally coincidence here, but the awkwardness of, of the shape of the skirt, how boxy it is, kind of matches how it was set up and uh, how it actually flowed on the actress in, in the show. So this is another one that I think just does an excellent job of, of matching what it's supposed to represent. And she has the new waffle piece, which is a printed one by one tile. They've done waffles before as one by twos, uh, excuse me, two by twos. Now you get a one by one, which is more proportional, you know, more appropriate. No alternate face for this one, unfortunately, though. The fifth kid is Will. And this, too, is a near perfect representation in Lego form of the character, of the actor in lego minifig form uh, they had to do the hair i'm glad that they they did actually do sp special hair for him i wish they had done special hair for mike probably would have helped a ton but yeah this is pretty perfect as well the colors are really good the print quality is is pretty good it's not perfect but it's pretty good i really can't complain much and this one does have an alternate face fortunately which is useful yeah folks who've watched the show know what this is all about it's not just being scared There's a little bit more to it but you know well done here with the expression the name of this character is joyce in the show she's played by winona Ryder, a kind of famous shoplifter i mean actress and shoplifter uh another really good figure here i think that does a good job of capturing the, the look of the actress you know, nice production values there. Good choice of hair. I think the waistlines were done tastefully. The folds of the clothing add a lot of uh, realism, believability. There's just something something about that that kind of brings it down to earth a little bit. And she has this special printed tile piece. It's a two by two. Glad that it is actually a print and not a sticker. And that is a drawing by Will, actually, representing himself, his own D&D &D character, Will the Wise. There's an alternate face, a little bit more worried, a good one, too. The last human figure here is one Jim Hopper. He's the chief of police of the town, comes with the coffee mug there. And uh, this figure, to me, does not look like the actor so yeah just a lot went wrong with this it's another case where the torso is pretty good nice to get that new torso print which is fairly generic you know it doesn't have any specific writing on it or anything that makes it specific to this theme but the face just ain't right if you ask me this is the least like the actor out of out of all the figures in this set by a long shot I just, I just don't see it. Maybe it's just me. Feel free to disagree in, in the comments, but to me, this is a miss. Oh, hello. What's your name? Sarlacc face? I'm calling this Sarlacc face. Technically, it's a Demogorgon who doesn't have a name, but has a name now because I just named it Sarlacc face. This is a really good figure for what it is. Uses those funky legs uh, from the collectible minifigure fawn i think that this figure is 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 really good yeah i can't complain about this the printing is very good glad they actually put some printing into the hip piece as well everything is nice and crisp 
those claws go on there well. It works really well when you have the matched color for the claws and the hands. I like how that, that works out. I don't think I've seen that done before with, the, with all the, the color matching there. And then the new headpiece with all the mandibles opened up is, is done pretty well. Maybe it's a little bit flat, but I don't know. I think it looks pretty proper for a Lego minifig. And there's more. Take that off. That's the same head, just closed up. So all of these petals, sepals, the outer mandible pieces, jaw pieces, bits, plus a little bit of dust there, all closed up over the front of it, which looks pretty perfect as well. I mean, as good as you could ask. Uh, you're not able to articulate this figure quite the way that a demo gorgon could on the show, but I think that's okay. It's, it's humanoid, close enough to humanoid, to make sense to do it as a minifig. Sorry about all the dust again, but yeah, I think this is another one that is fortunately done quite well for what it's supposed to be. Speaking of which, here's another thing that's done quite well for what it's supposed to be. This is a classic body on frame Chevy Blazer. Yeah, back when the Blazer was actually a proper Blazer, not this new weird crossover thing that they just came out with. This is a quintessential old small town USA cop truck and the design is great for something that uses straightforward normal legal Lego building techniques current pieces it's very different from their normal designs and it looks really good I guess boxy stuff in general tends to be a little bit easier to make than than curvy designs but I just think they did a very good job here. It's not perfect, but again, for you know something that's just using standard building techniques, standard existing parts that goes together pretty easily, I think this was designed pretty well. I think the designer should be proud of this this work here. Yeah, and has a little bit of storage space in the back. You can take all of this off here to get easy access. See the pumpkin there? That's actually a new piece. I forgot. It's just a it's just a regular pumpkin piece that's fully closed up. You know, it's not done as a as a mask, and just has a actually a hollow stud, not just open stud, hollow stud on the top. Useful piece, so you can actually put it over a bar if you want. You can put it upside down if you want. And finishing up the interior here, you just have space for a single figure who has to be centered there and doesn't really get a proper seat. There's kind of a suggestion of some texture down there with the four quarter one by one tiles. And it has to be open to allow that pinhole from that Technic brick with the pin on top of it to fit through there. So that's what holds on to the whole thing to allow the, the entire build, you know, with all the terrain and the house to be flipped upside down with this on it. Nice, nice build here. Overall, just nice. Simple techniques used to good effect. In the show, most of the kids ride bikes, and this isn't their style of bike, but I do appreciate the the return of the black color, which has been rather uncommon up to this point. So, you know, it's, it's nice to, to have more of those being made and put into the general circulation. Honestly, to me, this does not look like $200 worth of Lego set when it's all complete and it's put on display. I mean, even just look at the picture on the front of the box. Notice the size of the figures. Use them for a scale. There's not a lot of weird perspective going on here. It's, it's a fairly straightforward uh, perspective that, that they chose in, in focal length. So, you know, I mean, the house is not that big. It, it's wide but it's not that tall and it's definitely not that deep it's it's deep enough to get some figures in there a little bit but most of the play and display that you're going to do with figures with this entire thing is going to go around the outside honestly there's just not that much depth to it however it does have a lot of pieces and the build is rather involved there's a lot of work that go that goes into assembling this and having gone through that assembly process myself, I do feel like there's $200 worth of stuff here. $200 worth of Lego building experience, that's for sure. It's just the end result, mostly because it has so many small details, so many, so many small pieces used for the texture, 
for the outside, small pieces used for the small interior details, small pieces even used in building up these trees, which actually have a lot of plates, you know, one by X plates and one by one and one by two bricks used in them actually uses up quite a lot of uh, parts even for that. And a lot of little things, you know, just really bumps up the part count, unfortunately. But certainly the overwhelming majority of this set is done really, really well. I've got my issues, major issues, with the choice of face for Hopper and for Mike. But beyond that, the figures are, are great, uh, great to nigh perfect. And each of the versions of the house is good. The trees are, eh, they're not that great to me personally, but I, I like the gimmick a lot. I think that was that was a, a little stroke of brilliance there for sure. And the execution is good. Being able to just grab the thing from the middle, flip it, set it down, not having to worry about its structural stability, its strength, you know, it, it doesn't fall over easily. You can make it fall over, but you know, it by default will will hold its own. And having the, the truck so easy to connect and everything, a lot of this is just really, really good. But if you have reservations about the price, I will support you in those reservations. And I can empathize. The end result, when you build this, doesn't feel like it matches the size and scale of the box, the number of pieces, or the price. Though the build was very long, I did record it in real time once again, and we'll be publishing that over on my Pure Builds channel. So if you want to check that out, it'll be delayed about a day after the initial publishing of this review. And if you don't want to just have some nice building going on in the background with some different camera angles and a little bit of playing around with the lights and just hearing the sounds of Lego pieces going together, and you actually want to see this thing put together in a reasonable amount of time, I've got the sped up version that's also being prepared. Again, that'll be about one day after the publishing of the review here. I will link to both versions of the build on screen momentarily and also in the pinned comment. Thank you very much for watching. Hope that you enjoyed this. And if you are a fan of Stranger Things and liked this video, please consider sharing the video with another fellow fan. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you again soon.